Oh snap, he's wearing the doe cat, so you know I mean business. This is the greatest YouTube channel ever. <laughs> well, at least it's the best smelling one. My name is James, this is Jay Royal. I do videos about fragrances, and that's what I'm doing today. I like doing lists. I love top fives, but today I'm feeling a bit generous. This is a top six. My name is Jeff. Today I'm gonna to talk about six fragrances in kind of a particular order that I would love to add to my collection. And for one reason or another, they're just not in my collection yet. The unattainable fragrances that I haven't been able to get at this point. So who's to say when these fragrances will make their way my way? into my wine cooler of fragrances. So number six on this list of my most wanted fragrances is by Zoologist, and it's called Squid. I was lucky enough to get a sample of Squid recently when I purchased B, and I was blown away by it. Squid is just a really cool fragrance that is a smoky aquatic, which is such a cool combination. It capitalizes on the squid ink kind of feel. Not that it's as inky as something like an Ancre Noir, but it has that quality to it. It's mysterious, it's evocative, it's moody, and it's really, really fun to wear. It's sort of reminiscent of the feeling I get when I wear Memoir Man. It has that kind of smokiness, but think more blue rather than green. I think I haven't picked up Squid yet because I sampled it only like a few months ago for the first time, so it hasn't been long enough for me to build up the hype in my own head to just buy it. <laughs> also, if any of you have these fragrances that you want to sell to me for cheap, uh, please let me know. Number five on my most wanted list is by Boadicea the Victorious, King's Road. Now, if you've heard of this fragrance house, you probably know why I haven't bought it yet, because it's very expensive. And I'm also a fragrance collector in the sense that I don't necessarily want to get one-offs from different fragrance houses. I like to get a couple from the house just so I can have, you know, a more well-rounded collection. Is that too much to ask? The thing about this house is I don't want to get a mortgage yet to buy them because I might need one to afford them. King's Road is a special fragrance to me because I think it was part of the first ever Royal Rumble that I ever did. I was given several samples of Boadicea the Victorious fragrances and I smelled them all blind, gave my first impressions on video, and then put it out. It's actually right here, and if you want to check it out after, you can. And I battled all the fragrances off, and I ended up picking King's Road, which isn't actually the most popular or hyped Boadicea fragrance, but it just spoke to me and how it was composed. I loved the green mossiness to it that really made me think of medieval forests and enchanted jungles. It also has a lovely rose and iris quality, which are pretty much my two favorite florals to wear. And then of course, there's some woodiness too, which further adds to that mental image I get of cool greenery in medieval times. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess King's Road, it's like a king. Sire, ching, 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 for the king. <laughs> But it was cool. It was cool to see King's Road win because it wasn't the bangers of Blue Sapphire and Mayfair and Ardent, all those ones that get talked about a lot. It just was what I liked because I didn't know what to like. I just liked what I like. I saw, dude, smash like. So King's Road, maybe one day it'll be my collection. Good one. Number four on this list is Coral Mandel by Chanel. This is part of the Les Exclusif collection. I always mix up Dior and Chanel's private collection names, so it's the expensive Chanel fragrances. If you ever go to a Chanel boutique, you'll see them lined up beautifully in these big old bottles. Speaking of big bottles, that's kind of the reason I haven't picked up Coral Mandel yet. Because I'm a collector and I like consistency in my collection, the only other exclusive Chanel I have is Boy, and I got it in the big 200 ml bottle. Which means if I want Coral Mandel, I'm going to want to get the 200 ml bottle, which again, very expensive. You're seeing a trend here, right? It's a price thing. The only problem with that is Coral Mandel isn't a fragrance that I would wear a ton because it is a little bit feminine for me. It's like a smoky white chocolate fragrance, which is incredible. It's one of the nicest smelling things I've ever tried, but 
to get 200 mils of it means I gotta wear a lot of it and I got enough stuff to wear. So just based on that, that's why I don't have it yet, but I really wish I did. If money was no object, definitely doing it. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Number three is a fragrance I got to try in Glasgow when I visited my fiance. It's by the house of Tom Ford and it's called Beau De Jour. I was surprised to see it on the Tom Ford counter and it was in a private blend bottle. Didn't really know about it. I wasn't sure if it was a re-release from back in the day, but I put it on and was I blown away. It was an incredible fragrance. Leslie loved it, which is a bit surprising to me because it's not a commercial smelling fragrance. It's not Ambroxan, it's not aquatic, it's not citrus. It's a Tom Ford, so it's most likely gonna be on the stronger side. And not only that, it's an aromatic fougere style of fragrance, which is kind of old school, kind of old manny. And although I don't look it or act it, I am grown, I'm an old guy, relatively speaking. And I tend to enjoy switching my fragrances up. Sometimes I'll wear a young guy's fragrance, sometimes I'll feel like wearing an old guy's fragrance. Squeeze, squeeze. <sighs> but for me, for me, in the category of aromatic fougeres, those green, musky, lavender, manly smells, this one is the number one for me. I wasn't sure if I was overreacting after smelling it the first time, but when I put on the sample recently, man oh man, it is so good. Not crazy, crazy unique because fougeres have existed forever and they'll continue to exist and there's much cheaper ones out there. But if you're looking for the creme de la creme of this category, I feel it's this. And I really want it. I want it in my collection. I just hope that the price comes down or becomes more readily available. I don't know. We'll see. Speaking of Beau de Jour, I think it's been re-released again. And now it's in that weird circular bottle that's been coming out where it's kind of ridged like a gray vetiver bottle, but it's definitely shaped like a little circular thing. It's kind of cute. I'll put it up here. So who knows? Maybe I'll pull the trigger. Maybe. Number two on my most wanted fragrance list is Selection Vert by Creed. Now this could be a snooze fest for those guys that don't like discontinued fragrances, but yes, it's discontinued, which is a large reason why I don't have it. You can't find it anymore. They don't make it. I went to so many different Creed boutiques and I always ask, hey, do you have Selection Vert? Because sometimes they have kind of the, the plain Creed bottles with a random fragrance in it, whether it's SCA Aluminum or the Pomplamoose one, but they never have Selection Vert. More recently, I discovered places that carried it, but they only carried it in the big flacon. Because I'm a freaky collector, I wanna get it in the tester bottle, like the 120 mil one or the 75 mil one. Heck, I'll even take that ghetto 100 mil one that's been coming out. What's up with that, huh? Just a... Citrus green fragrance, but it smells so good. It's so vibrant, it's so juicy, zesty. They don't make them like they used to, y'all. If you're enjoying this list, then uh, you can go ahead and uh, like the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Please don't click off because I'm getting way too close to the camera. Moving right along to the number one fragrance that I want in my collection. I have a lot of fragrances. I've bought tons over the years. I've gotten rid of a lot too. I've binged and purged. <laughs> but these are the fragrances that I wish I had. And this next one is the number one on this list. My house, a lot of you know, okay? Whether you pronounce it Memo or Mimo. Clone houses, if you're watching, if you can clone this one, <laughs> I'll be very appreciative. Wink, wink. I smell this fragrance at the mall. It was at my local mall. I didn't even need to travel to a duty-free or somewhere far away. It surprised me because I thought it was just a fragrance that I already had. I thought it was African leather. Beautiful fragrance. I believe Ashton from Gen Sense made it one of his 10 out of 10 fragrances. It's a remarkable, remarkable fragrance. Slightly spicy, sweet leather fragrance. He uses cardamom really, really nicely. But there's another one that's even better. It's also about twice as expensive. 
So yeah, another case of why are you so expensive? Why do you know I love you so much, fragrance? Why can't you be cheaper, Mimo? Memo? It incorporates one of my favorite floral notes, which I talked about earlier on. Rose. It's none other than my number one most wanted fragrance in my collection, African Rose. This fragrance, y'all, man, it's not even fair, okay? I tried to get by with making my own poor man's African Rose. And what I would do is I would put on African leather and then layer it with like a baby spray of Lyric Man by Amouage. And I got something that was kind of close, but not nearly as good. It was actually weird with the lime in watch. It's just sad how expensive it is because I don't have as much liquidity nowadays. I want to be saving. I don't want to be spending too much. And this just doesn't really feel like an essential purchase, even though I can easily justify that it is. You just got to convince yourself, right guys? You just got to say, oh yeah, of course I need this. I need this $600 rose perfume for myself. But seriously, if you like African leather, if you like rose, you're gonna love this, just like I do. I wanna spread this concept to the world. So commenters, let me know which fragrances you wished you owned and maybe why you don't own them already. And if there's any YouTubers out there, any fragrance reviewers, please feel free to make your own list. I'm really curious to see if people actually have most wanted fragrances or if they just go and buy whatever they want immediately. I like to show some restraint nowadays with my fragrance spending and um, maybe you should too. I don't know. Oh, by the way, this is some old school J Royal from 2017 where I compared all the Bowie Dissy of the Victorious fragrances blindly, hashtag Kings Road, spoiler alert. Anyways guys, I'm gonna go and edit some videos including this one. So I'll talk to you later.